Hi everyone, I'm Henry. My stem capstone project is basically about genetically modifying a plant so that it can be used to feed farmed fish in fish farms. I was inspired to research this issue because of the problem of overfishing. Overfishing is contributing to the depletion of many fish stocks. However, it is a problem that is set to get worse as the global population continues to grow and is expected to reach 10 billion by 2021. Therefore, we need to find ways to harvest fish more sustainably. One of these solutions can be fish farms, but the problem is that around one fifth of the global feed fish catch, excuse me, goes towards feeding farmed fish in the form of fish meal. This means that fish farmers are either further contributing to overfishing by the use of fish meal or nutrient deficiencies, because if they don't use fish meal or use less fish meal, the fish that they raise will not contain as many omega-3s, which is an essential nutrient that many people obtain by eating fish. One potential solution to this issue is the use of fish feeds that are plant-based, such as from the Camelina sativa plant, which is what I researched, which is a type of flax plant that produces an oil from the seeds. However, one obstacle surrounding this is widespread opposition, especially in the European Union, to genetically modified crops. So I'll discuss these issues more in depth later. The process to modify Camelina sativa, as I learned from an interview with a professor who is researching this phenomenon, is extremely simple. All you have to do is prepare a bacterial solution and modify the bacteria in the solution to contain the gene that you want to be expressed in the plant, then simply dip the leaves in the solution. I've created multiple visual aids about genetically modified crops and the floral dip process that I just described. And if you would like, you can open them on the link to learn more. I'll also put this up at the end of my presentation if you want to look at it afterwards. So my project had three main components. The first part was the theoretical modification of E. coli to produce omega-3s, which I did in between Thanksgiving and winter break. Basically what I did here is, since I was unable to do actual modification in a lab, I learned about plasmid modification and other biological procedures and use an online database to find genes from marine bacteria which naturally produce omega-3s and learn how that would be inserted into an E. coli. The next step for me was done after winter break and I decided I wanted to grow the Camelina sativa plant under a light myself so I could see what characteristics of the plant made it good for genetic modification and how the plant grew. Um, so by the end of this stage, which was done in mid-February, I had all my seeds germinated. And then as for the final step for my project, which I've been doing for the past month and a half, I've been working on the visual aids for um, GMOs and explaining the floral dip process. And I also started some seeds at school uh, in three different soil mediums, like I mentioned previously, to conduct an experiment regarding the growth of the plant in different soil mediums. And all of these soil mediums are not ideal for starting seeds in. Um, so I just wanted to see if the plants were capable of surviving in low nutrient environments, which they did very well in. And I'll explain more of my findings in a little bit. Um, now I'm just gonna discuss really quickly a few of the setbacks that I faced. Firstly, there was time constraints because I didn't have as much time as I wanted to be able to finish growing my plants and harvest the oil from the seeds. Um, secondly, there were restrictions due to COVID as for a large part of the year, both me and my mentor, Dr. Turbush, were at home. So we were unable to do like in-person labs. Thirdly, there was technological limitations. For instance, me not being able to actually modify E. coli or the plant for that instance, because we don't have access to the most powerful biological tools as a high schooler. And then lastly, another big issue that I faced, and I'll show you more of this on the next slide, is that the seeds that I had didn't grow straight, they grew sideways because of a variety of reasons. For one, I planted too many of them, so they're all crowding each other out for light. Secondly, the light was too narrow to cover all of them, so a lot of them had to tilt sideways just to reach it. And then lastly, I kept the light too far above them, so they grew these long stems, which is known as them being leggy seedlings, and couldn't support themselves. I started the next batch of seedlings around the end of February after my first batch failed. This time I made modifications, I made sure to only plant seedlings in the middle so they could remain under the grow light at all times without having to lean sideways. I made sure not to water them too much and kept the grow light closer to them. And this time it was much more successful. And as you can see from this photo, the plants that I have growing at home have gotten very big. This was taken in the middle of March. So 
By this point, the plants have gotten even bigger and I will have moved them outside where they'll be getting more natural sunlight. And while I don't have the seeds ready to go right now, by the end of the school year, the crop should be ready to harvest and I'll be able to examine it later on my own time. Here are some pictures from the beginning of March and the middle of March of my experiment. On the left, you can see the seeds two weeks after I initially planted them. Um, the one on the left is in the soil that I dug up from my backyard. The two plants, the two pots in the middle, excuse me, are from a mixture of potting soil and garden soil, and the one on the right is purely potting soil. So what I was able to conclude from this experiment after a few weeks is that the camelina plant is pretty resistant and able to grow in low nutrient environments, which corroborates the findings of various studies that have done similar experiments. And it shows that even in soil mixtures that aren't ideal for starting seeds, they were still able to grow and they're still growing relatively healthily. And I might move them back home so I can keep growing them after my project is over. Um, now I'm going to open up for questions. Before I do, I'm just going to summarize a lot of the things that I learned from my project. Um, I conducted multiple interviews and email rounds with the leading researcher who is working on modifying the plant. And he hopes to have a commercialized product that will be used in fish farms in the next few years. So the future is promising in terms of shifting the feeds of fish farms to be more sustainable. And ultimately that could help the human population immensely as farm fish could become an incredibly important source of omega-3s and protein as the global population continues to grow. And of course, if you wanted to look at the resources or visual aids about GMOs and floral dip that I made earlier, they're accessible on the URL seen here. Thank you.